William Hill, the home of betting. It's, it, it, I think we got a lot of chances in you know, quite a few of the races, but as normal, it's very competitive, very tough to win any race at the festival, and um, we're looking forward to it. Yeah, I was looking at the list that we just paraded earlier on, and I'm thinking, this, we've got a strong team going here, and that's without all the handicaps and all the others that we, you know, we didn't parade. Irving is going to maintain an unbeaten record here in the UK over hurdles with Nick Schofield. He's won the mighty... Great Kirby. chance in the opening race as well with Irving. Uh, yeah, on paper, he's won three from three. Might have another run beforehand, but um, he's done nothing wrong. You know, he's got to improve again, probably. Um, but um, we like him. And you had been keen to run him in the Betfair hurdle. Would you want to get a run into him before Cheltenham? Yeah, possibly. He, he looked very fit and well this morning. It's not the be-all and end-all if we don't. But um, if he doesn't have a race course gallop, but I mean, we could, we could, we could possibly look at something like the Dovecot at Kempton if it dried up. Dodging bullets ran at the weekend on course for the Arkle. Yeah, he's on course. He's come at the race well. Good run, giving weight to Module. Um, ideal prep for him now. He's got plenty of time to just get him right for for the Arkle. And also Hinterland for the race. Yeah, he's in the race as well. Um, obviously, we haven't run him through the winter with the grounds bad. He loves to be you know, he's nice and fresh, and um, that's what we're doing with him. And I spoke to you ahead of uh, his run at Newbury. Sam Winner, you were leaning towards the RSA rather than the four-miler. Is that the route you're going to go down? I think so. If you think we gave £3 to Smad Place on the weekend and Smad Place was sort of made joint favourite a favourite, then I think uh, it tells us we should be running in the race. And he, he ran well, so had a lots of improvement to come from Saturday's race. Better ground will suit him, a little bit, a bit fitter. Um, so that's where we're going to go, yeah. Not, nothing set in stone with all these races. It's no point saying now this is definitely what's going to happen because you might change your ground and looking at different opposition. But basically, that's what we're thinking. And would you have any others in mind for the four miler? Uh, just a par is a possibility. Black Thunder is a possibility. Benvolio is a possibility. They're all entered at this stage. Um, I think Just a par is a decent horse. He's had a, had a small breathing operation since his last run, um, but he would want decent ground. And wonderful charm goes for the two and a half yeah. mile novices. He does, yeah. He's good form. He's won three first three starts and then was, you know, quite a huge task giving eight pound to Oscar Whiskey. He's only beaten a head that day or a neck or whatever it was. Um, ran a good solid race. He loves good ground. We've kept him off all winter. You know, well, the ground's been bad and um, he does go well fresh too. So that's an ideal race for him. So the fact he's been off for a long, long time, not a concern? Oh, not at all. No, he loves to be fresh. He just doesn't want to run in really soft ground. And we also saw Alpha off at the weekend yeah. and given his run you've ruled out the gold cup yeah quite obviously you know watching him at kempton and uh saturday listening to daryl i mean at kempton daryl said that he wants to be going for the ryanair he said it even more so after saturday and it's fairly obvious watching you know back in trip better ground or suit and well so ryanair is probably made for him and you'd been saying beforehand you'd be worried about running him on heavy ground bottoming out before yeah. cheltenham Do you, are you confident that hasn't happened with him it hasn't he didn't you know once he, he got beat on saturday darrell looked after him you can see this morning he looked very very well we just needed to to see where we were with him really and he did need another race he, he carries loads of condition he's took you know some horses used to get fit at home he's not one of the easiest to get fit at home he needed another race and he wouldn't want to have done it after saturday so that gave him a good time basically best part of five weeks really and um he's already back canter and he never left the nut so um we're very happy with him a lot of attention is going to be on big bucks going for a fifth world hurdle how has he come out of the cleave yeah very well really pleased with him ran very well that day just got a bit tired um but he's improved a lot physically and mentally very happy with him as well any horse that's had that injury and had a year off is going to is going to need need a run first time really i mean you get them as fit as you can at home but realistically they're always going to come on for it a touch and that's certainly what he's done. A rose who rides him all the time says he's no different to what he's been any of the last three or four years and I, I actually think he ran as well the other day first time up as he's probably run on any his debut for a season you know. Some of his best opposition could well come from your own stables. Arcanda go for the race. Yeah, so Arcanda could be really interesting if the ground was good. I mean, we've been, been itching to try him over three miles and we thought the best time to do it would be at the festival as we did with Celeste Halo last year. And Celestial Halo, we shouldn't forget about him. He was second in the race last year. He was second in the race last year. I think on all known form, he's got it all to do to beat Big Bucks. But, um, you know, he's a tough, genuine horse. He's already won at Newbury this year over three miles, beat a Fisher's Cross and Rev de Savola. Um, so, yeah, he's a very good horse. Calypto put himself bang in the picture for the triumph yeah. hurdle at, at Newbury at the weekend. Yeah, good run. Yeah, we've got three or four in it. Still got one to run this weekend. A horse called Arcala. Uh, and Art Marisk is come back from the you know not been right in the autumn so so we've got a few possibilities but at the moment Clipto looks the one 
and how would he compare with your, your previous uh, decent juvenile hurdles? Well, I won the triumph with Zarkander and Celeste Haley were good flat horses, different type of horse altogether, you know, never ran on the flat, he's a national hunt bred, so totally different cup of tea. And you mentioned a horse, Alcala, that Zarkander, he hadn't had much experience yeah. before before winning the triumph. Yeah. What can you tell us about Alcala? Well, Alcala was second on his debut over hurdles at O'Toy, having won a bumper in the provinces. We just thought that if we were going to lose our novice, we'd do it in something like the Adonis. Um, and then we could go on to the triumph. If he doesn't win the Adonis, which is quite, you know, it's quite possible we haven't run him before, then he'd be left a novice until next season. So, but one you quite like a lot. Uh, he's a nice horse for the future, yeah. I mean, he obviously won the King George. He came back from that really well. He's fit and he's well. And, you know, we might try and get a race course gallop into him just to make sure he's 100% sharp. We've been schooling him once a week. And he's been jumping great. Um, I think he was just a bit <laughs> unlucky to finish, you know, to fall last year. Hopefully he can go and win it this year. He used to stay out and three miles around Kempton would always do to be a little bit sharp for him. So um, with, you know, coming off the back of that, hopefully, will uh, stand us in good stead. He's got to have a good chance. He's very fresh and well at the moment. He's doing lots of work and, um, yeah, he's in good shape. And last year you gave him a prep in the, the Denman chase yeah. before Cheltenham. Why, why not this year? I didn't need to this year. I wouldn't run him on that ground Saturday anyway. He had a good, tough, hard race in the King George. We just wanted to give him time to get over that and have a nice time to get him really prepared for the, for the day. And who do you see as the ones to beat? Um, obviously last year's winner, but, you know, Bobsworth, a very, very good horse. He loves Cheltenham. Um, and he Gold Cup's quite hard. I, I just think that Conti and Bobsworth have sort of set the standard this year, but you know, any Gold Cup's very hard to win. And uh, just looking at the, the, the week as a whole, yeah. what would be your, your best bet at this stage? <laughs> I don't know. It's difficult because we, we haven't done the entries for the handicaps yet. They're all due to come. We'll have plenty of horses to run in some of the handicaps, and it's, it's a matter of sort of, it's always a puzzle trying to think what is well handicapped and what isn't, because if they're not well handicapped at Cheltenham, they don't win. So we've got to work that one out near the time. Um, I, think, I still think one of my best chances of the whole week is Big Bucks. It's always quite hard to name dark horses for the festival, um, but perhaps Lac Fontana in the um, in the um, county hurdle. Uh, I I like Lac Fontana for the county hurdle. Um, should he go there? That's um, one of those things. In the next four weeks, it could change. But um, I've always I've always said that from the beginning of the season I, I like him, and <clears throat> and we had a little bit of a blip at Cheltenham uh, on his second run of the season, but. Um, he bounced back last time when he was probably pretty well handicapped, um, just by just by sheer chance of uh, of uh, of not running so well the time before. But um, he's progressive very far, and he's so well, you know.